Hello everybody, that's a short introduction into the lymphatic system which includes uh, lymphatic vessels that start as lymphatic capillaries blindly ending capillary spaces uh, that collect the lymph from the tissue fluid and larger lymphatic vessels collectors and lymphatic ducts. Then we have lymphatic organs that are primary which includes uh, the bone marrow that's where B lymphocytes as well as T lymphocytes originate and uh, the second or another primary lymphatic organ is the thymus that's where T lymphocytes are produced and and uh, where they differentiate all the other lymphatic organs are considered to be secondary which means they are infiltrated by the lymphocytes originating from the primary lymphatic organs this includes the lymph nodes this includes tonsils as the specialized areas of mucosa devoted to immune function this includes spleen and the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue sorry, mucosa associate, associated lymphoid tissue this uh, includes uh, lymphocytes distributed in the mucosa of uh, the gastrointestinal system that's where you call it gold or respiratory system that's where you call it bald like bronchi associated lymphoid tissue if we look on the distribution of various types of lymphocytes in the thymus bone marrow uh, spleen lymph node and the blood you would realize that the distribution of T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes is not even so for example only by T lymphocytes there are no B lymphocytes there uh, the bone marrow uh, in bone marrow 10% of lymphocytes you will find will be T lymphocytes and the majority will be B lymphocytes in spleen the ratio is much more even so is in the lymph nodes and in the peripheral blood majority of lymphocytes you will find would be T lymphocytes but let us consider that in blood uh, you will find only naive uh, lymphocytes and memory cells well uh, because, because the activated lymphocytes are usually in connective tissues or other organs uh, these secondary uh, lymphoid organs contain structures called uh, lymphoid follicles and let's have a look on the general structure of a lymphatic follicle or lymphoid follicle uh, which is an accumulation of uh, lymphocytes this might differ in these organs but we'll specify for example the spleen lymphoid follicles later on and look a little bit different but the general structure shows a mantle zone 
on the periphery which is densely populated by lymphocytes and a center called germinal center which contains less lymphocytes therefore it, it, it appears as more pale region okay so uh, the, the center is called germinal center uh, it's lighter and it uh, contains proliferating um, activated B lymphoblasts also known as centroblasts centroblasts nucleus with nucleoli and somehow lighter and more a little bit more cytoplasm and they are occupying more space here and the density of the cells is it's it's is smaller uh, the outer darker zone is the mantle zone. It's darker uh, with densely arranged lymphocytes. So, except uh, B lymphocytes, which cells can be found in the lymphoid follicles? So we got B lymphocytes, B lymphoblasts. We got also follicular dendritic cells. and macrophages both being antigen presenting cells we already got a scheme of a, of a macrophage in the chapter devoted to connective tissue cells and follicle identity cell has uh, long processes and uh, it's a it performs phagocytosis so there is an antigen Might be phagocytized. There are also phagosomes and lysosomes inside the cell, which is similar to the macrophages. And they will decompose the antigen and expose some of the antigen epitopes, some of the fragments. Post on the surface or presented to other immune cells. Uh, unlike in macrophages, where the presentation of antigen occurs with, uh, in the context of uh, MHC class two molecules, here it's uh, uh, it's without these MHC class two molecules. It's in context with some other molecules, but there still is a signal for uh, 
differentiation of central blasts. So in lymphoid follicles, uh, either lymph or blood is filtered and uh, the antigens uh, processed by these follicular dendritic cells and macrophages uh, are used for initiating a specific immune response uh, executed by B lymphocytes. If you uh, will ever have, uh, if you will be sus suspicious during the slide identification, you are looking on a lymphoid organ, you can ask three simple questions. So let me offer uh, kind of a decision algorithm. For lymphoid organs. Uh, first question you need to ask uh, what is on the surface of the organ? If there is epithelium, you can be pretty sure you are looking on some kind of a tonsil. Because only tonsils as lymphoid organs have epithelium on the surface because it's a, it's a special part of mucosa. And this could be palatine tonsil or lingual tonsil if there is a stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium there. Or it could be pharyngeal or tuberian tonsil if there is the epithelium of nasopharynx there that means the pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium well if there is no epithelium but the fibrous capsule on the surface then you need to ask another question and that will be are there Hassel's bodies Present. Once you will see Hassel's bodies in the, in the slide of a thymus, you will never forget these. So, if positive, you're looking on the thymus, the medulla of which contains these conspicuous Hassel's bodies. And if there are no Hassel's bodies, you need to ask a third question, which would focus on the lymphoid follicles and the presence or absence of blood vessels. So are there blood vessels, arterioles in the lymphoid follicles? If so, this is typical for the follicles of the spleen. pulp of the spleen. And if there are no arterioles in lymphoid follicles, then you are most prob probably looking on the lymph node. Mainly the cortex of it with the follicles. So this is the power of good questions. Let me add also that the lymphoid follicles, if I go back to lymphoid follicles, these are all, all, uh, either primary with no germinal center or secondary, they are with germinal center present. One correction to the shape of the nucleus of the, folli uh, of the follicular cells. The nucleus is not round shaped here, but is it, it's irregular shape and it has these sharp incisions called indentations. So I've corrected it because uh, the shape of the nuclei is very important, especially in routine histological sections where the nucleus can really um, 
be helpful when identifying the cells because you usually don't see the outlines of the processes.